hey, you like to be outdoors? You need some training. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. We have Jacob with us today, and we're going to talk about what we need to do to learn how to survive outdoors. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm going to be your host today on Art Chuck 101 with Jacob Fisher, and uh, we're, we're going to have some fun talking about training. <laughs> Welcome to Absolutely. the show, Jacob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little something uh, about yourself so we can get to know you? Sure. Well, my name is Jacob Fisher. I am uh, the owner of Outdoor 101, which is a outdoor oriented training group out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we do a little bit of everything. Um, archery is one of our bases. Um, I am a U.S. Archery Certified Instructor, and we do everything from kids archery instruction all the way up to adults. Um, and everything oriented from hunting based training to competition based training. And, um, one of my, the girls that I was training this year, she actually, uh, is looking to go to Penn state. She was talking to them about going on an archery scholarship. So, um, and so that she's definitely, uh, one of the examples of, uh, our archery training program and, uh, how good it can be. Um, I also do a lot of uh, first aid training, uh, a lot of outdoor safety training, wilderness survival training, and um, firearms, you know, firearms and defense is a part of that. So uh, we also do a lot of firearms um, specific training, uh, whether it's your hunting gun or your concealed carry firearm, uh, we train it all. That's pretty cool. There's, you know, there's, you know, we, we mostly focus on archery in this podcast, but there's many times we get talking about, um, you know, firearms. I, I, I grew up in, in high school, shit on a rifle team. And, awesome. you know, and when I went to, I forget which school it was, it might've been college. I was shooting, shooting a bow back in the seventies, uh, uh, where I was going to school. Um, they had an archery range there and my, my brother got one of the bare white tail twos and I was using that and, and, <laughs> Uh, it wasn't until sometime in the seventies when I got, I got my first uh, compound bow and, you know, I've been shooting guns, you know, for a long time and, 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 and it's, it's just all different sport. You know, when you, when I pick up my compound bow, I shoot one way. I pick up my rear curve, I shoot a different way. I pick up the rifle, I shoot it differently. The shotgun, the handgun, they're all shot differently. And that's and right. that's, that's kind of funny. Each weapon has its own unique prop, prop, uh, properties and uh, the military is even uses archery that's right absolutely and uh <laughs> it, you know i actually was on um or was a uh, coach for the marine corps paralympic shooting team when i was in the marine corps um back between 2007 and 2013 i helped a lot of the uh disabled uh, marines I kind of find their way uh, with archery and that was right there in the performance archery center in San Diego. Um, we did a lot of good stuff to, with Marines to, uh, you know, give them an outlet outside of combat. And um, it, it was really fun. I found my passion in teaching people uh, why accuracy is interesting, you know, uh, all the way from uh, David and Goliath, people have been interested at hurling objects accurately at a target, and um, they do it for all different manner of things, you know, whether it is yeah. for combat or whether it is for recreation, sport, or, um, you know, ultimately survival. It all kind of ties in hand in hand, and it, whether you're uh, sweeping with a shotgun to shoot a clay or, you know, aiming in at a running rabbit with your recurve bow. Um, it's funny that you said the, uh, the bear whitetail story because uh, <laughs> my grandfather actually gave me a bear whitetail and was like, when you can draw this back, you can go hunting with a bow. And <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> they were not the easiest bow to draw back. You know, not there, there wasn't a lot of adjustment on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you moved the cable to one pin and you had 65% let off and move <laughs> yeah, it to another yeah, pin. Yeah. And I forget what the other amount was, but yeah, you're just taking a cable and moving them around and <laughs> pulling them off and sticking them on other wheels. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
It was pretty awesome. He, yeah, that was my first bow was the bear whitetail. And I think it was a hand-me-down from my dad or my uncle. Uh, one of them. I know that I dug it out of my grandfather's garage and uh, found some, uh, some random laying around broadheads and uh, Easton XX 75 uh, aluminum arrows. Uh, and that was my first hunting setup. I think I even carried them uh, in my hand out to the tree stand the first time. I was <laughs> all, uh, all of 12 years old because I couldn't wait to get out with my bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty good. When you go out there and, and you just get out there, it's like whatever it takes to get out there and go. And, and yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I've, I've been kind of, I've always found my way to get out there and go, you know, um, actually this picture here behind me was from one of my hunting trips, uh, in Salt Fork, Ohio. Um, I came across this old dock and it just looked like a picturesque scene and my wife turned it into a photo and, uh, it, it, I truly enjoy coming in here and seeing it. It's it, like a moment of serenity, but, um, yeah. we've been, uh, my brother and myself, um, we kind of, and my brother actually is, uh, another Cleveland, he has another Cleveland based outdoor company, um, uh, that deals with fishing here out of Lake Erie. But, um, <clears throat> he and I, uh, we've been going out since we were kids, whether it was, uh, terrorizing the backwoods of Pennsylvania with our BB guns and 22s or, uh, old bear whitetail bows and shooting <laughs> at, uh, squirrels or whatever else would find its way around. And, uh, uh, yeah, ultimately we have been hunting with our bows since, since we could pick them up. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I hear a lot of, a lot of stories, you know, where they're, they, you know, they start young and, and go, I know I started back in the sixties, you know, when I was maybe five, 10 years old, I forget now. And mm -hmm. at my recurve, a 25 pound, uh, fiberglass Ben Pearson recurve, uh, <laughs> and I still have it. I won't shoot it because the fiberglass is starting to crack, but <laughs> I have one out there that actually is still kicking. It's still kicking in classes, actually the old uh, red and white Ben Pearson longbow or recurve longbow rather. Yeah, my, mine's kind of a, a yellow color. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's set up for bowfish, and I you know, I wanted bowfish with it, so I taped the bracket onto it, and I can't give my hand it anymore now, but that's when <laughs> I was like, you know, 10, 11 years old. <laughs> I actually have one of the old bear. Uh, I think I picked it up secondhand. It's not one of the original ones that I hunted with, but I have a bear whitetail that I have set up for bowfishing here, and uh, a friend of mine, Jimmy, we took would take this... Uh, old uh john boat out on uh the portage lakes here in ohio they have some of the best carp uh fishing for bow fishing anyway they they all stick right up there on the top of the water and it's pretty clear yeah that that's good i i've been out a, a few times and i was like the big fish coming by I, i'm <laughs> shooting it's like i miss it no oh, man it. <laughs> and like I can't miss it, and then a gar comes swinging by. You know, this is about an inch diameter. Yeah, I hit that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like hey, go, go figure. You know, it's like I'm missing everything because I don't shoot my recurve a lot. You know, but mm -hmm. it's like, um, how come I hit this one inch fish, uh, missing these that are six inches wide? You know, and twelve yeah. inches long. <laughs> well, you're more focused on the target. That's what it is. <laughs> you're more focused on where you want the arrow to go. Yeah. And, and I don't use sights. I just look at the target and, and shoot. So I, yeah. I don't do all the, you know, the gapping and, and the mm -hmm. string walking. And, um, I just look at the target, draw back and shoot. Well, you and, know, and, and, the and, instinctive way has, uh, been tried and true for quite a long time, you know, and yeah. I, I try and teach my students, uh, instinctive first, I think it's a bit easier that way for them to graduate to the easier levels. Yeah. But start with the art, hard stuff first. That way they can learn the principles and the fundament, uh, fundamentals outside of all of the gadgetry, you know? Yeah, just, just keep it simple to start with and don't worry about you know, all the right. pins and stuff. And I can shoot my recurve fairly fast because I draw back with target, come back, anchor, and, and draw through. Mm -hmm. Compound? Yeah, I can't. I've tried to shoot them fast. I can't shoot them fast. <laughs> it, it's a different weapon. I shoot them differently. It you know, sure I come is. back, you know, I got the kisser button and the peep and the and everything. Mm -hmm. I just line all up and, you know, look at my target, put the pins over it and 
Like mm-hmm. if I'm boat fishing or something like that, yeah, they're they're gone in the next lake by the time I get drawn back. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh I I enjoy shooting um my traditional uh equipment. Actually, if you looked on uh, any of my socials and stuff like that, you'd probably find a um a picture of me with my son in our baby carrier backpack and uh, I was actually shooting my longbow um, and you could see uh, the the limbs in the picture and the uh, I was at anchor when the the camera actually snapped the picture it was a pretty awesome uh, picture for me you know it was like passing yeah. it on my son he uh, was three years old I think when um he asked me for a bow and I got him a a wooden long bow and uh he's been shooting ever since my daughter she's picked up that bow since then and uh yeah it's um I appreciate that it was passed on to me and I want to do my part to pass it on to not only my kids but anybody who wants the training you know I, I pride myself on taking anyone whether you know, they have a disability, whether they, um, you know, uh, whether they have some hurdle they want to, they have to get over, um, mental, physical, whatever. Um, I pride myself on taking them all. So, um, anybody who wants the training and they can come by and train with outdoor one-on-one. Now, if they want to get a hold of you, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, you can find me on my website, outdoor101.org. Um, and we are, uh, like I said, based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I also have uh, all of my social platforms um, are Outdoor 101, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, <laughs> you, you name it, we're on it. You know, it's a social world. And as much as I uh, disagree with uh, gravitating towards that miniature supercomputer that we all carry in our pockets uh right <laughs> it's it's the way the world communicates now and uh, as much as i don't like it you gotta stay with it you know so right you can find it's, me on them all and and I'll, I'll put a link to different sites for you in in the description i appreciate that thank you i'll just I'll just have me send send the links you want to put in there and i'll put them in there in the description so you can get a hold of you and and for talk sure. with what's for going sure. on and um I know um, if you want to go ahead and share your screen and sure. show everybody a little bit about your 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 company and your your website and kind of some of the features that you carry and you know, go ahead sure. and uh, go ahead and do that. Let me, let me pick that up one second. I'm good with guns and bows and everything else. Not so much with tech. <laughs> All right. Sometimes that's the hard part, right? That's right. All right. I think it's sharing now. All right, yeah, it's so sure. here's my website, outdoor101.org. Um, like I said, we're based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, this is actually one of my farms here uh, out of Ohio where I was out doing some shooting. And uh, that's um, one of my favorite rifles that was passed on by a good friend of me. Um, he he gave it to me uh, to hold on to um, about two weeks before he passed away. And I keep that as an homage to him right there in the middle of my page. Um, I love not only that picture, but that rifle and, uh, you know, M1 carbine. Uh, That's actually a mini 14 that uh, he had tricked out and kind of worked on, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoy shooting that thing. Anyway, uh, if we keep on through my website, you could see uh, the, um, some of our, training mission here is to make sure that uh, we give enthusiasts, whether they are, um, you know, archers or uh, their firearms, uh, concealed carriers or, uh, you know, open carriers out in in the wilderness, um, that we can uh, give the appropriate amount of training to those that are seeking it. And a good portion of that is uh, our training outside of the shooting sports. Um, and that is through American Red Cross. We do first aid training, uh, wilderness survival training. We do um, first aid CPR, AED training. 
Um, all of that stuff is found right here. Um, we even do stuff, important stuff like babysitter training, you know, um, people think about <laughs> yeah. getting themselves and uh, their employees trained, but uh, they will leave their kids with a high school student that has no training what, whatsoever. So um, going here into the Red Cross tab is how you can get the people around you trained with the appropriate stuff. Um we do, uh, like I said, offer a lot of firearms training. Uh, firearms is just a part of being in the outdoors, uh, whether it's hunting with a firearm uh, or using it for your self-defense. Um, being competent with firearms is absolutely important to navigating our world safely. So uh, I do offer everything from uh, basics of pistol to um, online training, uh, depending on what your availability is you know, uh, training shouldn't be blocked off to you. So uh, if you have to get the training in uh, online, then now for that too. Um, I have concealed carry training. Um, like I said, carrying a firearm is a part of everyday life, not just living in the outdoors. Um, so uh, you have to be competent enough to put that firearm on your body and confident enough to carry it with you on a daily basis. And that's making sure that you're legally, morally, and um, financially safe uh, aside from physically safe should you ever have to use a firearm for your self-defense. Um, I do pride myself on bringing a lot of higher end training to uh, the Northeast Ohio region. Um, I am very cognizant of staying in my lane. Uh, we talked about how I was a U.S. Marine, um, but I was an aircraft mechanic. You know, I wasn't kicking in doors. I wasn't, uh, you know, doing those things that you associate with being a Marine, but, um, I know people and I am friends with people. So, um, I bring those people in to do the training that they do best. Um, this year in particular, I have world champion, Bob Vogel. He's coming in, uh, for a two day competition oriented pistol course. Um, that's in April. Cool. And then uh, a lot of people, uh, they might have heard of the Warrior Poet Society. They are a firearms training group out of Georgia. And um, a couple of Army Rangers, John Lovell and Paul Perkison, they run a great training program um, for both pistol and rifle familiarization, um, along with a lot of other stuff. They also have a uh, TV channel and you name it, they do it out there, but he's coming up for a five day course, two, uh, two days, pistol, three days, rifle. Um, and all of these are links to those classes. If you click on those, then it'll take you straight to their website. So you can sign up for their classes, uh, that I am hosting. So, um, that's pretty cool there too. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, like I said, good with guns, not with tech. Another thing that I'm passionate about is giving back to my community, okay? Um, there were times that were tough on me uh, throughout my life. Um, one reason or the next, I have uh, needed help from outside sources, and I recognize that I don't necessarily need that help now, but I can be able to provide it to people who do. Um, this one here has, I haven't had a chance to get with my web guy to update the website yet, but this was a raffle that I did in January um, to provide for the Future Anglers Foundation of Northeast Ohio. Uh, it's getting um, kids and underprivileged youth out uh, into the outdoors and into fishing. Um, that's through my brother and, uh, like I said, the Future Anglers Foundation of Northeast Ohio. Um, we raffled off a M1 Thompson. That's a um, true replica of the World War uh, II uh, Tommy gun. This was, uh, other than the barrel length and the bolt design, it was uh, an exact replica made by the auto ordnance company that uh, made the uh, Thompsons of old, including the old gangster Tommy guns. Um, this month, we have a, another raffle. Uh, this is for the Susan Craft Lung Transplant Foundation. This is a good friend of mine. Uh, she was impacted by COVID. She um, spent her 30th birthday in the ICU. She had her uh, lung transplant before 
her first wedding anniversary. Um, uh, truly a, um, you know, a heartbreaking story, but she has been recovering from her lung transplant and she's doing better than ever now. Um, she still has struggles every single day. And, um, she wanted to give back to her transplant community community because she saw the lack of uh, care and um, lack of resources there. So uh, she started her own foundation. That's the Susan Craft Lung Transplant Foundation. And this month we are doing a raffle for her. That is this one here. So if you clicked on her link and navigate back, to this page we're doing a raffle for a dan wesson 1911 uh it's a 2500 pistol um we can ship to any ffl in the nation um and that allows third-party transfers uh it's only 25 dollars for a single ticket or we have a uh, higher end ticket packages available so one three and seven tickets um and the price varies depending on that um uh, but that's just my way of giving back to uh, people that I've been impacted by, right? Um, and uh, other than that, uh, I have uh, many different training offerings, right? Um, from firearms training to archery training to American Red Cross. Uh, like I said, if you are looking to train uh, in the outdoors, um, outdoor 101 is kind of your place. All right. Uh, we have an ongoing series every other Wednesday uh, in Streetsboro, Ohio. Uh, that's right here next to me. We um, call it the practical application of shooting. So it's not only firearms fundamentals, but the use of firearms fundamentals and the applications of force and things like that. Um, the speed competition course is listed here uh different courses i have coming up like the fundamentals of pistol shooting or red dot pistols um this uh just got posted today um this is a full weekend retreat that i have planned with the nra and the uscca here um in ohio the armed uh, well-armed women association and the nra women on target association are uh, coming together to put this course on with me. Um, this is the Fight Like a Girl weekend. Uh, we are going to be doing anything and everything uh, related to women's self-defense, whether it's break contact with different contact type weapons uh, like Kubatons or um, what have you, type uh, contact type weapons, uh, pepper spray tasers um and then ultimately firearms and stuff like that and it is a full women empowerment weekend um i have two supremely uh excuse my language but um bad at chicks that are going to head this up uh candy pedicord and uh lisa cardone like i said with the well-armed women association and then with NRA women on target. They're going to head up this class for me. Um, and yep, ladies, they're going to uh, let you shoot me with pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it. And uh, it's okay. I've had it before. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just uh, chalk this one up to experience. But it's okay. Um, it, we just opened up registration for that class today. It'll be extremely fun. Um, we, like I said, we train everything from uh, kids to uh, adults in everything from archery to firearms to first aid, AED, and CPR training through the American Red Cross. Um, it's only possible through our uh, uh, through our sponsors. And uh, our our sponsors are really great. Uh, I don't um, promote products that I don't use. Um, and I wouldn't put anything out to my students that I wouldn't think is the best stuff out there. So um, Firearms Legal Protection is who I choose for my uh, self-defense legal coverage. Um, not only are they the cheapest out there, but they uh, have the most comprehensive coverage. I... Like I said, I use them for my own self-defense. I encourage all my students to use them. Um, you can sign up uh, through here, um, through my affiliate link right here on my website. Um, 
like I said, the American Red Cross has been one of my sponsors from the beginning. Uh, core essential gun belts. Uh, I've carried them for several years before I even had a training organization. Um, and they were also one of the first people to say, yeah, we'll sponsor you. And uh, they believed in, it believed in me from the beginning and have helped me get products to my students and things like that. Blade Tech Holsters is a local company right here out of Streetsboro, Ohio, that provides some of the best Kydex holsters around. Um, this one is more applicable to us here on the Archery Podcast, Rogue Bowstrings. Um, they're based out of Ohio, and, uh, and this company has provided some of the best bowstrings around. Uh, they, uh, the mastermind behind it, um, he came from America's Best Bowstrings and uh, knew that he could do it a little bit better. Um, and created rogue bro bowstrings. Uh, the formula is still there. They're still creating uh, great products. Uh, this was actually riding on my bow this year when I shot my elk in Montana. Um, it was, uh, it is absolutely a tack driver on my bow every single year. Um, I, I love rogue bowstrings. The R21 is the only thing that will uh, end up on my bow. Um, we also uh, have affiliate links with the NRA and USCCA um, if you are interested in joining with those guys. Um, we kind of do a little bit of everything. So um, we also have some merchandise if uh, you're interested in getting any of our gear and supporting us that way. Um, we, Like I said, we kind of pride ourselves on bringing training to everyone Um we, uh, I truly enjoy, um, raising the level of awareness and confidence in my area. Anybody who's seeking training is seeking to become more confident in their world. And, um, not that I, I think I'm the best at that, but I definitely have people that can get you as confident and as competent as you want to be, whether it's archery, firearms, first aid, doesn't matter. Um, it's all a way to become more secure in your world. And that's what I like. That's what I enjoy. So, yeah, a lot of great information there. And, and, you know, the, the first aid training is something that everybody should have. If you're going to be outdoors, you know, how, if you get, get hurt, how do you take care of it? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. anywhere, you know, winter time, we all know winter time, your, your hands get cut very easy on, on stuff. You know, you mm -hmm. might grab the tree and it's like, oh, you're bleeding. It's like, oh. How do I do that? So you need to have yeah. something to take care of. But if you get more serious injury, you know, then how do you take care of it? And, you know, I always carry first aid stuff with me um, when in my backpack. I've got some first aid stuff because I just want to make sure I have, you know, the basic stuff. And I'm in back of my trunk. I got a first aid kit, you know, in the back of my trunk in my car. So I always oh, yeah. have something with, you know, now if it's a major problem, I may not have the stuff for that. But, uh, um, you know, most minor things you can take care of and, and, and that's what you, you need. You need to have some of that and know how to use it. That's the problem is yeah. if you don't yeah. have it and don't know how to use it, don't do any good. Now you're depending on somebody else. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people take advantage of, uh, the small things like recognizing that a problem is actually happening, you know, um, a cardiac arrest looks much like somebody falling asleep, you know, and uh, it, it doesn't quite look like it does in the movies where somebody's grabbing their chest and laboring over. Sometimes it might, but uh, other times it may not. And, um, you know, I've seen different situations in my world that uh, people have needed this advanced training, whether they thought that eh, they did or did not, you know, um, my wife had an uncle that uh, passed away while he was out having a good time with the rest of his friends. And uh, they thought that he had just fallen asleep at a table and here he was in cardiac arrest. Um, you know, a little bit of recognition could have helped that situation quite a bit. And an AED could have possibly been the thing that saved him. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not just like you said, uh, knowing things exist or having the tools available. It's also recognizing when a problem is actually happening, you know? 
yeah, if you're if you're out with somebody and all of a sudden they fall asleep, it's like, why would all of a sudden they just fall asleep? And yeah. Yeah. you know, if you're out really late, yeah, it could be and drinking. Well, it could be you just passed out. But uh, you know, if they haven't been drinking that heavy and and just been out hanging out and all of a sudden they fall asleep, you got to check something's going on. You know, mm-hmm. it, it could be just a diabetic, you know, problem. You yeah, know, so you know, check on them and see and. And, mm-hmm. you know, you know how your friends act and if they're acting mm-hmm. differently, then, mm-hmm. you know, that's something you might need to be aware of. And that's where training yeah. like you provide yeah. is really good for, for that. You know, now what do I do? Right. Absolutely. You can't call 911. Yeah. They're not yeah. going to get there in time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a good saying amongst the, the training community that uh, when moments count, help is minutes away. So, um, right. You can uh, recognize that a life and death situation is happening and think, hey, I need to call the police or I need to call an ambulance or whatever. And uh, those people still have to drive to you, you know. (laughs) Right. So uh, it uh, takes and I don't know about you, uh, the more rural areas, you know, they um, that lead time starts to grow um right. and so it can go everywhere it, in my area like um downtown cleveland the uh response time is somewhere in the four minute area um and then if you travel just outside of cleveland uh to the areas like ashtabula and things like that response time grows to like seven eight and even as many as 15 minutes in some areas of uh, northeastern ohio so um what do you do <laughs> you know right things uh, things like uh an arterial bleed or um you know it, when somebody slips on the ice and hits their head on a rock uh, you know how do you stop that bleeding and do you have the tools there to stop that type of bleeding you know yeah. um and, and like you said maybe somebody had been drinking a little bit or you know had something else in their system that made their blood blood a bit thinner and now your situation has worsened quite substantially right. um so uh, you know even though uh, you may not be engaging in high risk activity um you know the opportunity to save somebody is still still very real and present you know no matter where you are at in life you know whether um you're going to cracker barrel with uh your elderly grandparents <laughs> or yeah. uh <laughs> or uh <laughs> I, i'm making the joke because i go to cracker barrel with my grandmother um uh, <laughs> but, uh whether you're I would there... be the grandpa that you're going with you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I was recognizing that as I was saying, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it 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 can come anywhere, and um, you know, it there's it, it's more of a saying in the firearms community that uh, it, your attacker gets to um, choose the battleground, um, but it's the same anywhere. Uh, your never going to choose when you um, could face somebody with a heart attack or uh, some, uh, I was actually in downtown San Diego when a, um, I think she was 82. They said when uh, she just missed her step and she fell over and um, she was bleeding from her head all the way down the side of her face, uh, her hands, because her skin, yeah, skin was quite a bit thinner than, um, you know, what mine is, uh, her skin was thin and she had scuffs from the top of her head all the way down her face, her hands. And, um, you know, there wasn't a med kit in sight at that point. And I realized quickly that, yeah, you know, yeah, that that's easy stuff that I can carry. And that if I happen to see something like that, um, I very, very well could, be the one that saves somebody you know and um if i can just if i inconvenienced myself with a half a pound worth of junk that i may (laughs) never need then hey uh the one time i do need it i'm pretty glad that i have it so yeah well you can say it's like well why do you have car insurance Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's right. Are, are you planning on getting an accident? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's I, just in case. Yeah, yeah. And just the, like the same a, thing when so he says, "Well, why you carry a firearm?" Well, well I had rather just in need case it, I need it. Have it than not, yeah, yeah. Have it, or yeah, yeah. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah, you know? right. And and it just <laughs> you just gets to be a habit. And you just you just always have it with you, and it, it's just mm -hmm. something that's there. And and I always thought you know if you carry deadly force, you need to have another option. So I carry an OC spray. <laughs> it, 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 it's not just something that i say it's something i do on a, a daily basis um actually i have my cubaton and oc right here i took it out of my pocket uh i must have dropped it um i had it, uh, it it's not something that i say it's something that i do because it's yeah important you know um in my state uh ohio you have the obligation to use a lesser means of force if it's able to be used to stop a threat you know so first that has to be available and you have to have the knowledge to use it um, right and i would sure i would sure rather uh douse somebody with some hot sauce in the eyeballs then shoot them. I don't, I don't want to ever have to kill somebody. And, um, right. you know, I, I may carry a gun, a deadly force implement, but, and I, I'm absolutely willing to use it if I should need it. Um, but it, that doesn't mean that I want to, you know, and, right. and, and nobody should have that mentality. You know what I mean? Um, and, it, you know, I don't, I don't think that anybody, at least nobody that I've come across in the firearms community has that mentality, you know? No. Um, and no that's the criminals. Right. That, that's their yeah. mentality. Right, right. Well, and, not and I had I had 20 years of uh, Hapkido. So okay. my first instinct is is that, you know, not not going yep. to, to the gun. And um, my, my dad's girlfriend at one time, her son was a, a cop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking, you know, but so what kind of range can you, your gun's not effective for you anyway. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, all I had to do was just pretend to draw. And, and he was, I forget how far it was, you know, 10, 15 feet away. Mm -hmm. I aborted all that. And I went for my training that I'd done for mm -hmm. years and years and years. You know, I, mm -hmm. I deflected and, and what I just, that was just instinct because I'd yep. had the training for it. So I didn't need anything else. And, but, you know, if I'm going to carry the gun, mm -hmm. I, I carry an OC spray because sometimes I can't mm -hmm. carry the gun. Like it worked, I can, I can have it, but it's got to stay in my locked car, but I have yeah. a lock box inside of my locked car. So mm -hmm. I have it there. So I was driving in and out. It's just, it's just fine. I didn't have it with me. And, you know, when I, when I'm carrying, like kind of go in a restaurant, it's like, I, I've always sat with my back facing away from the door. I've just, mm -hmm. I've done that for decades. And mm -hmm. So now when I go in, because I have the gun, I was like, okay, if something comes down, where can I shoot? What's the safe direction? Right. Because if I miss, what's behind that person? So I'm always thinking about, okay, what is a safe place? I was like, there isn't any. Yeah. So my option yeah. is not to use it. Um, yeah. Besides, it's well, easier to sneak out the OC spray than it is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, it, there too, yeah, you catch a wrong wind, and that OC spray is very much used on yourself. Right, uh, right. Uh, and uh, they're uh, using a firearm, um, whether it's on a range or in a department store, um, I still have to adhere to my laws of safe gun handling, you know, that's what right. keeps me safe and using it, you know, so, uh, you know, never pointing a weapon at anything I do not intend to shoot without proper safety measures to do so like right. a solid holster or um you know uh the safest possible direction in a concealed carry situation um or uh, you know keeping my gun unloaded until it is employed like uh, you know, the firearm that I'm carrying, that's employed. The firearm that is in my safe for uh, s stored reasons, um, then no, the f ammunition's not anywhere near those firearms, right? Because, uh, and in fact, I make it a point to tell my students that you're locking up your firearm, 
you should lock up the ammunition as well. Um, so my stored guns, right, the light, uh, the rifles and stuff like that that I take out west or whatever, um, the rifles are locked up. And then I have a separate location where the ammunition is locked up. You know, uh, I recognize that uh, there are three parts to the firearms accident triangle. You know, there is the firearm, obviously. There is ammunition, right. obviously. But the last part is an operator, you know, uh, physics matter and, you know, uh, anything in an object at rest is tending to stay at rest until acted upon by another uh, object, which, right. you know, in a firearms case is a human and this little booger hook that gets us all in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, you know, and hey, the same thing with archery, you know, like hey, a bow is never going to pick up and dry fire itself. You know, um, I actually uh, was in San Diego when um, uh, at the Balboa uh, archery fields, when a kid was shot by a bow, he was down getting his arrows while, or an arrow, I'm sorry, he was down getting his arrows when somebody decided to shoot at the target next to him. And uh, they had an accident and shot the wrong at the wrong target and he was hit by the arrow you know so uh you know adhering to these safety principles and um being situationally aware is how we all stay safe you know so right and and you know what i talked about you know when i'm out with my 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 gun you know i always make sure the target with the bowling i do the same thing you're sitting mm -hmm. in your tree stand you got to know what the target is you can't assume because you hear a noise and see something walking by that it's a deer. Mm -hmm. um, we actually had an incident here in, in Nebraska where um, a hunter was, that's when I had my my store, and they both had come in the store, so I was able to get both sides of the story. The one guy was just walking out. It was, you know, right, you know, toward at the after, just after shooting time, and he was walking out and didn't have his flashlight on because, you know, enough moon, he didn't really need it. And the guy in the tree stand, uh, he heard a noise and he and he seen it and he come walking by. And so he shot what he thought was the deer. And we all know if we've been in the forest, it's starting to get light. You swear there's a deer standing right there. It'd been standing mm -hmm. there all night long. Because ever mm -hmm. since you can start seeing his shadow, and it's a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, or else sure you've been watching this tree all day long, <laughs> and all of a sudden it's starting to get dark and it like looks like a deer. Mm -hmm. um, if you've been in the forest much during sunrise, sunset. You've seen it. It's like mm -hmm. that looks like a deer, and it wasn't yeah. a deer. So that's mm -hmm. why you got to be make sure of what your target is, mm -hmm. as well as what's beyond your target and in front of your target. Mm -hmm. You know, and to the left and the right. You know, yeah. I, I, where I, where is it at? You know. Right. I tell this story all the time of uh, a, a friend of mine who shot a uh, shot at a buck and ended up killing the doe that was uh in front of it and walking past um and it, he didn't take note of that and by the time he released the arrow the doe had made her way into the sight picture and the buck was not there you know and so yeah. uh the the doe is what he claimed <laughs> yeah <laughs> not what he wanted but you know that's what you shot you killed that's, that's what he that's got your that that's your your trophy and you know there's a lot that seem to think that, um, you know, you got to shoot a buck. You got to shoot a buck. That's the ultimate. Shoot a big buck. Mm -hmm. You know what? The does taste better. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? The younger, the better they taste. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I I tend to go out for a buck every year, but I buy a doe tag every year, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? My freezer's mostly filled with the dough. And uh, yeah. I think I'm on um, this year was close to uh, it's either eight or nine years that my family has been sustained sus entirely by wild game meat. Um, we haven't had to buy red meat from a store in eight or nine years. And um, it, you know what? As long as I can help it, I am going to continue that trend. Uh, yeah. The meat is cleaner. I know where it comes from. Uh, I, my kids think it tastes better. I do too. Um, and, you know, wild game meat is what sustains my family, whether it's uh, deer or fish or elk. Um, 
we haven't gotten around to raising chicken yet it chickens yet because you know i i've been around there and they smell uh <laughs> but uh, but they, you know, they leave what's good for the garden though <laughs> that's true that is true that is true uh but uh, anyway I, I we have been sustaining ourselves uh on meat and produce from our own our own uh natural surroundings and um that's another part of it you know self-sustainability uh it's just not something that um, is common with my era and was common in previous eras, you know, right. um, uh, everybody thinks that the store is always going to be open. Uh, everybody thinks that, uh, FEMA is going to bring them water when Katrina floods the borders. And you know what? It's just not the case. Even when Katrina no. came through, uh, it took them three weeks to get water down to Louisiana. Um, a, you are your own self-defense. You are your first uh, own first response. Um, you need to make provisions for such, you know, you need to, right. uh, you know, when somebody locks down the stores and say that you can only have so much, well, uh, you need to be able to still provide, you know, you need right. to be able yeah. to, yeah, there's people that count on you, you know, so you need to be able to do those things. And, uh, uh, I've only found uh, I've o found only the uh, solution to or the only solution to anxiety is preparedness. Um, whether you're yeah. anxious about uh, societal collapse or EMP or uh, you know whatever disaster you think might come uh, naturally, um, the only way through that is preparing yourself for the worst and hoping for the best you know right. uh, I, I i hope the best comes and you know i i truly don't ever want to have any conflict with anyone out in, in town because people are crazy nowadays but yeah. um <laughs> it, preparing myself for that uh worst day of my life is how i get to enjoy the best days of my life so um it, it's just been a personal motto and kind of uh, uh, plan of mine is just prepare for the worst and be happy when the best comes. Yeah. Yeah. We got a couple of comments in the group. Uh, uh, one comment from uh, Janice is you can find some really cool stuff in your parents' garage. She <laughs> sure posted can. that when talking about, you know, finding <laughs> stuff. And then, uh, and then Joe said, uh, first aid should be mandatory thing to learn for all situations. I believe and, so. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that's true. We just, yeah, you need to know, um, you know, mm -hmm. how to do basic stuff. You know, what do you do basic if you stuff. cut yourself and how do you take care of it? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I've done that. It's like, oh man, super glue <laughs> just yeah. Made, yeah. made a super glue bandage and, <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. you know, that, that solved the problem. And, and, you know, sometimes it bleeds enough underneath, but then once it gets done, it, you know, it comes off and it's healed up and, where you go and that's right so, you know just just little things like it's it wasn't you know surgical grade super glue but it was super glue okay. it's <laughs> you super know thick glue. ca and glue that that i use in archery and <laughs> i got a i got a few scars on my hands that have come by way of uh whether it's my outdoor endeavors or uh i'm a mechanic by trade uh i um uh aircraft mechanic uh i work on private uh, aviation fleets here in Ohio. And, uh, it, yeah, I can't tell you how many cuts and nicks I've <laughs> mended <laughs> with super glue. <laughs> <laughs> it's some pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's well, when you go along, you got to keep it clean. You know, you That's get it right. dirty, you know, if you, you, you cut it a little bit of flap, you just put it down and, and put a little super glue on it. Makes you don't glue your fingers together. But mm -hmm. you know, there you go. Now, now it's protected. It's it's uh, uh, it, you know, it's covered. Uh, you know, band aids get dirty and fall off. The super glue mm -hmm. takes a while to come off. So, yeah, yeah. sure does. And uh, most of the time, it stops bleeding right away. So, yeah, yeah, it stops. <laughs> my wife it yells quick. at me whenever I reach for the super glue. But you know what? It's my hand. I'll do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it won't. It won't hurt you. You know. That's right. I wouldn't try eating it or nothing, but you know, other than that, that, that might not work too well. Yeah. Probably won't work out in your in favor. That's for sure. 
no. <laughs> yeah, that's been real interesting. Uh, you know, hearing all the different stories that you have and all the different offer, you know, things you have to offer. And you, you know, anybody that's looking to get some training, you know, definitely get a hold of you because it's looks like you have the whole the whole range, you know, from archery to learn archery, learn outdoor skills, you know, learn first aid, which is always really good. And, you know, a lot of places have an, an AED, but how do you use them? You know, I've never really been trained with them. They're, they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, you see like, I, there'd be a sign that says there's one here. Actually, where it's at, I'm not exactly sure, but how to use it. I wouldn't know how to use it because I've never been shown how to use it. And, and right. you know, that that's something that I think we should all take it upon ourselves to, if nothing else, watch a YouTube video of how to set it up and how to use it. So at least you have some idea when the time comes. Yeah, I mean, at least exposure to the basic, uh, you know, the at least the three to four basic types of AEDs that you're going to find out there. Um, there's only a few, and uh, there's uh, a reason for that. And um, if you expose yourself to them and uh, what their prompts are and how their pads come and where they might be hiding and things like that because you know they might be in different places of the bag that they're stored in or box that they're yeah. stored in you know um and it furthermore you know like being able to find them <laughs> right and know, and know how to get to them in the case uh, of needing them right because like you only I got said, seconds <laughs> you only got a second yeah and uh when yeah when help is needed uh or when moments count you know help is only a few minutes away so yeah um yeah and uh, you know from my own experiences i i i've seen life slip away very 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 easily and uh you you're always left wondering it, like if somebody recognized that could it have changed the situation if somebody had a medical kit if somebody could have stopped that bleeding if somebody could have uh, uh you know just had the tools and the wherewithal to use them then you know somebody yeah. could be here today and um you know, that that's kind of my goal in life is to ensure that people have, uh, you know, I, I don't, I definitely don't have all the answers. I'm very cognizant of saying in my lane, like I said, I, I, I'm not the, the best firearms trainer or archery trainer out there, but I got friends and I'm going to get you the best training that I can get you, you know? Um, so, uh, it's truly my goal to ensure that the society around me is uh, both confident and competent enough to save my life should they ever need it, you know? Yeah. Well, you don't have to know everything. Just have to know who, who does and then get right. all of them and bring them in and, and there you go. You don't have to be the expert. <laughs> Just the coordinator. <laughs> That's right. Thankfully, Steve Jobs and all the smart people around him uh, came up with these little smart devices that I put in my pocket and I can call people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's been great talking with you. Absolutely. Uh, I know it's been we got to go. We'll, we'll have to do this again and uh, come back sure. and uh, uh, do this again sometime and uh, continue on our conversation and, and see what going on in your world that you know it's going to change every every week it probably changes and you know, we just right. need to I'm, get a hold of you and, and say hey that's let's, right that's let's update right. you know let's catch up on what things are going on and you know what what new things are coming out and there's a lot of things that we can uh, do subjects on we can do one just on first aid <laughs> that's right absolutely you know there's a lot of things we can do that so yeah we can we can plan on you know we could do one just on uh, on one aspect of of, of what you do and and that could be a whole a whole podcast just in what you need for safety and what you need to carry with you and how to use it and and we can do some lot of training so yeah we, sure. let's let's plan on getting you back on and covering some of these other things that you have such knowledge in and and you know or, or bring somebody else on with you that has more knowledge you know we're, right. we're open That's for right. that too so Anything well, to cool. provide value to the to the listeners and those who are watching, you know, th yeah. that's what we do. You know, yours is Outdoor 101, mine's Arch Talk 101, because we want to help people. That's that's the beginning that's right. of helping. That's why I named it 101, because let's help the beginners get started and in advanced yeah. as well. So you're mm -hmm. kind of in the same same scheme here. It's like let's help beginners out and go along from there. 
Well, I went with 101 because you, you got to start somewhere, you know, whether it right. is uh, baseline first aid or, uh, you know, you're uh, starting out, you never bought a gun before, you never seen a gun before. Um, I, it, I just... Um, I just trained this guy from India. He came in, uh, now lives in the United States and never had a firearm in his hand before. Um, I it just trained a doctor that uh, he just had his first exposure into archery. And, uh, you know, it's 101 because we all have to start somewhere, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, I definitely appreciate you having me on. I had a lot of fun doing this and, you know, hopefully I, I brought something to value, <laughs> of value to you. Podcast. I, I learned so be able to sleep, i'm okay so. if somebody else learned it's great <laughs> good 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 well uh, i appreciate you having me on and definitely uh let's do this again yeah yeah that'd be a lot of fun so uh for those that are watching uh thanks for watching the, the, this far and i uh, remember you can catch the video part in our stuck one on facebook group as well on my youtube channel learn to fix it yourself the audio comes out um on Fridays and Mondays, the video on the YouTube channel is on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and you can listen on Spotify. You got the Apple Podcast. You have Audible. You can go out there and, and listen to it. So there's a lot of places you can look to it and watch it. You can also go out to archtalk101.com on that website as well, and you can get a lot of the information out there as well. So I've been uh, uh, honored to have you on as as a guest, and my name is Roy Canterbury, and I've been the host on Arch Talk 101. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. See ya.